I'm going to have Mary come up and talk about this next one, my illustration here with this. Because what time is it? It's time to put our gardens in, right? And it's funny, she shared, I forget who you said, was asking about gardening. Okay? And I, I've tried gardening a time or two. I'll tell you what. And, you know, there's things that you can do. You know, you obviously, you prepare the soil, but you have the sun, you water it, you help it grow with feed and help that nourishment. But the biggest aspect is, guess what? Mary, how many hours a week do you put in your garden? I don't know. A lot. Trust me. Alice, you know, yeah. right? It takes work. And that's the aspect. You know, I would like to say I don't have a green thumb, but maybe not just because I haven't put all the effort into it. You know, I, uh, my, we had the community garden in Bluffton and we had this big square and we, second year we decided to get bigger. We, we did two yuck walks and I don't know what we were thinking. Okay. <laughs> and with that, and and, and I, of course I'd come to Mary and say, how do I get rid of these bugs? What do I need to, you know, she said, sprinkle some set on that <laughs> and do all this and, and that sort of thing. And, um, and I was amazed at this. I, you know, I think I've told you this before. I found a vegetable that bugs won't eat. They're eating all the leaves of everything, except for the kale. Even bugs won't eat kale. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe somebody out here likes kale. I don't know. Not moi. I've only ate kale once that I like. That's because I took some to my sister, and she took that kale, and she put it in bacon grease and onions. And boy, that was the tastiest kale I ever had. I think we just took out all the nutrition out of it. Okay? What can I say? But if a bug's not going to eat it, why am I going to do it? But the problem is, I'm just, I, I'm neglectful of my garden. And so it was hard work. And so, you know, you got to get that aspect of being able to do that. And the difference was the person that takes care of it. And the element that present in the lives of the people in the early church created an environment for growth. We should be looking, those of us who are followers of Jesus, to see how we can help one another grow because we're family. And what they shared more than anything else, though, was love. The book of 1 John describes it this way. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 says this, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Okay, so that, that fellowship is with Jesus. That bond that pulls us together. And because we have that common bond, you know, we see that with other things. You know, sports teams. If you're for IU or you're for Purdue, you, you have that, you run into somebody that's a fan, you do that. You know, I run into somebody that's a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and you'd be surprised how many there are in our area, to be quite honest with you. Besides me, okay, I'm not alone in that. And that gets that common bond. But our bond in the family is Jesus and our Heavenly Father with that. And secondly, we find out that the family of God meets others' needs. The thing that was attractive about God's family in the early church was the fact that they were meeting each, other need, each other's needs. When they saw a need, they were, they were there. They were entrusting to one another their struggles, their trials, their needs. That means we have to be open and transparent with one another in the family. And then they were doing what was necessary to meet those needs. They were meeting, they were the physical presence of God, if you will, in each other's lives. They were his hands and his feet. And in order for any family to function in a healthy manner, each individual must do their part to bring about this flourishing. The community of faith that we exist in today is no different. We must be willing to meet the needs of those around us. And when we do, we become attractive to other people. That's what polls. As we continue to grow in our relationship with Jesus, that should pull others and say, hey, you're different. I noticed that 
when things are going bad and everything, you you don't get upset as like everybody else. I'm saying you don't get upset, but you're, it's different. You know why is that? I came across this little writing here that can be helpful, if you will. It says this: "This is my church. It is composed of people just like me. It will be friendly if I am. It will do a great work if I work." It will have generous gifts to many causes if I am generous. It will bring others to its fellowship if I bring them. Its seats will be filled if I fill them. It will be a church of loyalty and love, of faith and of service. If I make it what it is, then I am filled with these. Therefore, with God's help, I dedicate myself to the task of being all these things I want my church to be. We are the church. We are adopted into the family of God. And it's important that we make space at the table. When we were made new and, and welcomed into the family of God, it's important to remind ourselves that this family is meant to continually grow. And when we experience the love of God, and you have, haven't you? Sometimes we need to remember that. When we experience the love of the Father, we are compare, compelled to share it with people who have never felt it before. Or those who just quite aren't ready that they <clears throat> reject it. I'm reminded that the Bible tells us that we are the light of the world, and when we shine brightly through our words and actions, the world <clears throat> takes notice. <clears throat> Matthew 5.16, Jesus said these words, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify who? Not yourself, but glorify your Father in heaven. You see, our good deeds become invitations to the fellowship, to the community, to God's family that we experience through our faith in Jesus. It's how we make space for others to come and join us, to be a part of us. If God has made an impact in your life, if Jesus has made any difference, then we are looking for those that God is bringing into our lives to be able to say, hey, I can share something with you. This is my journey. This is what has happened. This is what God has done in my life. And I know that God can do it. You know, I remember growing up, we would go visit our grandparents. One week at one grandparent and one at the other. And you know, one thing I noticed, and I know my dad picked up, was that, you know what? Your table has those leaves for a reason. You have the leaves you can put in, expand it, make it big, you know? And I always remember my grandparents, their table was always big. They didn't take the leaves out. You know? And uh, I find that kind of interesting. And I think about that more and more. You see, you know, one, it's a hassle to have to put them in. You take them out. Okay? That by pure reason, for me reason, to keep them in. But that aspect, especially when it's just grandma and grandpa. Okay? But if they didn't know you were coming, they still it was still big. Because they were open and welcoming. And that's the way Christ's table needs to be. Our mindset needs to be that we're reaching out to those. And so I really have two questions. I only have one on the, on the outline there. But the one question is this. Is the table open for you to share what he's done for you. And if that seems difficult to you, I'm going to say this. David said, I remember all the things that you have done, Lord, in the past. Why? So I can say and sing of your praises of what you have done for me, and that draws and attracts people to God. It's not about us. It's about what God, through Jesus Christ, has done in us. How has Jesus 
change your life and your future. <coughs> your future because of Jesus Christ and his heaven. Are you willing to share that? Are you willing to do that? And secondly, are you a part of the family? Maybe you're sitting here and you're not. That part of the family isn't an exclusive thing. It's about accepting and proclaiming who Jesus Christ is. We're a part of the family this morning. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over us and being with us. We thank you for making us a way to be a part of your eternal family. Thank you for making space at the table. For being an invitation, oh God, for being kind and loving. Let us be more like you <coughs> as we interact with others that we come into, that they may see you and feel comfortable at the table. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me?